The new models are in showing exactly who's going to see snow and how much we could get. And folks, the cold air is certainly no stranger to where we're going here future because this cold front that comes through really, really means business and it's going to stretch as far south as Florida. So please let me know where you're watching from right now and we'll get this conversation going because look at these fronts as they roll through two of them back to back bringing in Arctic air that is no joke. Sub zero wind chill values combined with some snow. We could have school closings or delays up through the Midwest into Tennessee. Even West North Carolina could have some issues Sunday into Monday as the snow and cold air begins to move to the south. Even even North Georgia showing up in some of the action on the models today. This all tapers off by Tuesday. So let's get right to it, folks. Let me know where you're watching from. This is all brought to you by a little piece of what we call the polar vortex. Jipping down here and bringing in some serious cold uh, to the Carolinas. It is going to feel like the coldest we have had since this time or, or since the heart of winter last year. I mean, we, we've, it's been a while. It's been a minute. Let me show you the timing on the European model. It shows Sunday morning, some snow in Michigan beginning to take shape. That's as the colder air is catching up to that moisture. And here we go. By Sunday evening, there's snow in western North Carolina. There's snow in Indiana and there's snow beginning to fall in Ohio. And the snow is continuing to get heavy in parts of Michigan. And you go back toward Illinois, uh, up through uh, Wisconsin, there could be some snow as well. This looks to be a little bit more east, and it's going to be lake enhanced. In fact, as we go into southern Indiana, uh, southern Ohio, into West Virginia, there, there's going to be quite a bit of snow here piling up. Our models here trending a little bit upward today as far as who's going to see what. So I do think that this snow potential has the chance to last until about Tuesday morning, and then it starts to taper off. So let's look at brand new totals. These are the European models. I'm going to go over them a little bit more in depth here. Look at how it's really enhanced by the lake here. I mean, some lake enhanced snow, lake effect snow continuing. And look at this. This big swath right here is the one that means business. Those pinks are 10 inches or more. And you see a couple of pinks showing up in western North Carolina. So those higher peaks, Cleveland Stone in Tennessee, into Beach Mountain, Mount Mitchell, Mount Pisgah. I mean, those areas getting some northwest flow enhancement there and that's going to squeeze out some moisture there from the Great Lakes and, and boy we're going to get a lot of snow in areas that uh, just typically don't see it this early so this is a rare storm a lot of the ground could be covered in Ohio and Indiana are you watching there right now Pennsylvania especially western Pennsylvania two to five inches upstate New York I mean big time enhancement here from the lake we could get 10 plus inches of snow and in many locations let's get into western North Carolina first look at this a half an inch to an inch and then you get into these higher mountains that face Tennessee, eight, nine plus inches of snow in those areas. Let's map this out here for the Midwest up through the Northeast. And as we look ahead, look at the swath coming in through Indiana. That right there is what means business as we map out the 10 to one ratio in some of these models, the European doing a really good job at that. Um, and as we map out that potential, back it up one model run right there, those pinks that are showing up are those flare ups of higher totals there. So that's something that we're going to have to watch is from North Carolina up, there are going to be these pockets of some higher totals that want to roll on through there. Uh, so looking at that through the lens of, of where we're going in the next 24 to 48 hours, uh, these models are going to get some better agreement and we'll be able to get some ex extra information in. Now, speaking of agreement, the GFS showing a little bit more of a drier solution, but that's typical. The GFS has kind of done its own thing this year, but the fact is it is still showing snow in the same places. It's just not showing as much snow in the same places. Um, it, it, it's not got as much lake enhanced snow for Ohio or Indiana, but it does show snow falling. So it just doesn't have as much coming down or as higher totals. As I map that out, it is going to look different, but it is kind of the anomaly here. Look how much drier that is for Ohio, Indiana, uh, but it's got a lot more for Pennsylvania into most of uh, New York State. So we'll have to watch that. I, I don't think the GFS is really on to much. I do think it's latched on well to the cold. It's got that handled really well. In fact, as we map this out going into next week, Sunday is when it just starts to change for all of us. I mean, it gets really cold by Sunday evening, where Sunday afternoon, it's really quite hot. We got 80s in Columbia, South Carolina, 74 in Greenville, 69 in Asheville. And then by the time we get into Sunday evening, that cold air is just roaring in like a lion, really, really pushing in fast. And by the time we're into Monday morning, almost everybody from the upstate of South Carolina north and westbound below freezing. And Tuesday morning would be the coldest of this time frame. And as I map that out, 
were hard freeze from Maine to North Carolina to Georgia to Alabama, even freezing temperatures all the panhandle of florida jacksonville's uh you know 41 but you go uh north of ocala uh, you know at 36 uh, orlando upper 30s low 40s i mean this is some serious chill but when you factor in the apparent temperature that's the wind chill value the component to that that um, is quite potent looks like i'm frozen let me refresh that model for you there let me bring it back one run, 18Z, there we go. Why does this give me a hard time? All right, 18Z, there it is. Look at these feels like temperatures by Tuesday morning. Uh, single digits for the Appalachian Mountains. Let's flip it over to the European. It had a six degree temperature in Boone, Beach Mountain. And there have been times where I've seen this model try to spit out sub-zero apparent temperature so wind chill value is so cold it's sub-zero and in fact the 30 showing up as far south as south florida i mean central florida 35 sarasota 31 i mean tampa i mean we're, we're not talking about this just being a northeast or a or a midwest cold blast this is coming all the way for you in florida with the exception thereof of key west you get as cold as a whopping 65 think you'll be okay everybody let's hop on a flight to key west but yeah this separation of some warm air cold air does lead to the potential of severe weather on friday uh, that condition is very likely there for middle tennessee would be the hot spot of that in fact we do have a level two risk for severe weather issued for middle tennessee with storms being possible going into our uh, friday afternoon friday evening time frame and as that moves through north georgia upstate south carolina i can't rule out some thunder in the wee hours in the morning of saturday and then for that matter saturday night sunday a secondary front coming through that one just doesn't have as much you know juice with it but nonetheless i do think we'll have the potential for a little bit of lightning saturday morning so do keep that in mind as we move forward is those areas could certainly get it. So I want to keep that in the forefront of your mind as we're mapping out what could be coming our way. Folks, as always, I'd like to end the videos with a little shout out to you for watching right now. And that uh, always means so much as you are tuning in right now. So thank you for doing that. And please, in the comment section right now, let me know where you're watching from because uh, in my next video, I'll be giving some shout outs and we'll be letting you folks know what I see when I see it. And that's kind of my 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 go-to is uh, whether I'm on TV or um, online, my goal is to always give you an accurate forecast, number one, but to also kind of be transparent what I'm seeing. I, I'm going to let you know I see something first and hopefully uh, keep you posted through it. So uh, keep that in mind. So hello, Central Pennsylvania. Uh, bring on the snow. We always miss out, so we're overdue. Yeah, I think you're going to get it this time. Sydney watching from Anderson, South Carolina. Hello to you. I love this weather in 70 degrees. I'll take this every day, right? Steph watching from Connecticut. Hi to you. Hi, Chris. I thoroughly enjoy your professional reports. We live in Lansing, Ash County, North Carolina. Hi there, Bill. Used to broadcast your neck of the woods from Charlotte. Um, so you've, you've probably seen me on, on one side of the, the mountain or, not, or, or the other, maybe. Uh, Curly says, seems a little early in the season to get so cold here in Greenville, South Carolina. Yes, I'm so far away from you. <laughs> Thanks all for you do, Chris. Hey, got a local. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Watching from Marietta, Pennsylvania. I'm ready. Jimmy says, you're the best weatherman. Hey, thank you, Jimmy. Hi, Chris from Pensacola here. No more snow. We've not got any yet, but I still feel optimistic we won't get any. Yeah, you, you, you had more snow than us last year, right? I mean, how, how random is that? How, how crazy is that? But here we are checking in. Checking in for more. Thank you. Hey, Chris, watching from Winchester, Virginia. It'd be fun to get a little snow. Not enough to shovel, though. Yeah, I don't think we'll get that this time, but you know that's probably around the corner for you at some point. Bristol, Pennsylvania. Toledo, Ohio. November, as usual. It gets cold and the wind blows. 10-day local forecast shows no dire speculation that the sky will fall. Weather happens, but forecasting is good as a bet of roulette. Well, less. Go, go try it then, dude. Go for it. Watching from Swannanoa. Hi, Chris, from Greenville, North Carolina. Tuning in. Chris, watching from Valdosta, Georgia. Hello to you. Georgetown, South Carolina. Franklin, North Carolina. Westminster, Maryland. Northern part of Baltimore. South of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. About 800 feet above sea level. West of the Appalachian Ridge. Which really determines what the weather will actually be. Let's see how close you really are. The winds do a funny dance around here. Hi, William. Thanks for watching. Hi, Chris and fam. Oakfield, Maine here. It's cold already. 
I knew we should have built the wall at the Canadian border. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, what else we got here? Port Charlotte, Florida will take any cold weather. Southwest Florida over a hurricane any day. Thanks, Chris, for your excellent forecasting during the soon-to-be official hurricane season. You helped tremendously in giving us the best, most accurate forecast possible with the tools that you have to work with, along with your expertise in meteorology. And put our mind to ease through this hurricane season, improving all the many non-meteorologists here on YouTube wrong consistently. <laughs> Donovan, thank you for your kind words. Um, I will continue to keep you up to date, and I'll continue to do it. I appreciate you always tuning in. Emily, watching from Seneca. Hi there. Larry's watching from South Carolina. We got Orlando in the house. Honey, a pass in the house. What else we got here? North Georgia's in the house. GFS is bugging. You're right, Emmanuel. Getting the Subaru winter weather, new brakes, got new tires a few weeks ago, getting the battery next week just because of the psychology of seeing lots of money go bye-bye at once. <laughs> I hear you watching from Indianapolis. Emmanuel, it's time. You, you know the drill, so good, good on you for, for doing your chores early uh, versus being reactive when the stuff starts coming. So good job for you. Joseph's watching from Whittier, North Carolina. We got Myrtle Beach, five inches of snow in 2025, January. Are we getting that this week? Again, Myrtle Beach has had more snow than me in western parts of the Carolinas. Lebanon, Ohio. Will we get lots of school uh, snow for school delays? Also, will the snow stick on the grass at my location? I do think you'll see uh, the snow stick. I, I, I don't think it's going to cause much in the way of road problems quite yet. Uh, I mean, if you get closer to three inches, that certainly could cause some slick spots. And I wouldn't be surprised if some schools are delayed or closed for, for a day. That would mainly be Monday if it happens. But right now, I think it's going to be more manageable. Bring on the snow to New Jersey. Is Georgia going to get some snow? North Georgia will. Nashville, maybe some flurries. Mostly east of you, though. Brandon, Florida, Laura City, Ohio, Ohio in the house. And David just says wrong with four explanation marks. Why does YouTube always put the, the fun comments at the very end? That's what we get to end on? Well, we won't choose to let it end on that. Folks, thank you for watching. Uh, please like this video. Uh, subscribe. Turn on notifications for more updates. My goal is to keep you posted. You know those models will change. Uh, timing could, uh, intensity could go up. It could go down. My promise is to keep you posted because we're getting that wheelhouse where, you know, it won't be too far away when the National Weather Service will start issuing some winter products. So I do think we'll get those, including some wind chill issuances because this is going to be some serious cold next week. Again, heart of winter type stuff. Folks, stay safe, and I'll have another update later on. Stay safe. I'll keep you posted.